presidential candidates appearing on the ballot were required to nominate electors. The major party electors were elected at their respective party conventions held for Vermont statute. The result of the election clearly shows that the Democratic candidates for president and vice president won here in Vermont. Vermont's Democratic presidential electors are Martha Allen from Canaan, Vermont, Representative Tim German from Essex Junction, Vermont, and Governor Peter Chumlin from Putney, Vermont. Today's Vermont electors will first sign the Oath of Allegiance and Oath of Office as required by the Vermont Constitution, Chapter 2, Section 56. Then they will cast their votes on ballots provided for the president and vice president. Then they will sign the certificate of vote. The original copies of the certificate of vote and the certificate of absent payment will then be sent to the U.S. Archives, to the vice president as president of the U.S. Senate, the chief just, judge of the Vermont Federal Court, and to me as Secretary of State. The vote of the Electoral College will then be counted by the U.S. Congress on the 6th day of January. We will now proceed. So you have before you the votes of office. I will ask you to stand and raise your hand. There are two sections that I have to give you, the, the Oath of Allegiance and then the Oath of Office itself. I state your name. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious. That I will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious. To the Constitution or government thereof. To the Constitution or government thereof. So help me God, or under pains of penalties of perjury. So help me God, and penalties of perjury. Now the oath of office. I state your name. I, Timothy Herman. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of presidential elector. The office of presidential elector. For the state of Vermont. For the state of Vermont. I will therein do equal right. And will therein do equal right. And justice to all persons. And justice to all persons. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. And ability. And ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God, or under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Thank you. If you would please sign your oath. Okay, next up, we will, I will hand out the ballots for vice president. Please mark them and, and hand them back in. And now for president. The results of your vote. Hillary Clinton, New York, three votes. Tim Kaine, Virginia, three votes. I will now ask you to sign the certificate of vote.
from Waterbury. I came because democracy to me is about showing up. Show up or shut up is, is my philosophy. Um, I believe that the Electoral College should be abolished either by a constitutional amendment or by states adopting a rule where they instruct their electors to uh, vote for the candidate who got the most popular vote because one person one vote is what our democracy is supposed to be founded upon and I believe that the Electoral College subverts that. Uh, there's a lot of history behind the Electoral College. Uh, the only reason that I could see for it to continue would be for it to make sure that someone who is not qualified to be president not be elected despite the popular vote. Uh, today is probably the strongest um, argument for stopping someone who was elected from becoming president. And um, if the Electoral College fails to do that, I believe that the Electoral College will have uh, basically eliminated the only reason for its existence. I'm a past uh, committee member of the state Democratic Party, but I'm here as a citizen of the United States of America. You know, other than my main issue is uh, getting money out of politics, and so I'm a strong uh, supporter of the Stamp Stampede, and for more information on that, stampstampede.org. So what role could the electors have played in, in blocking Trump, given their votes were bound for, for Clinton, if, even if they did listen to the, the popular vote today? Well, that was their job, was to vote for the way the popular vote is, and they did their job, and we applauded when they did that. We weren't here to object to our electors. We were here to object to Trump being installed as president by the Electoral College, which now, in my lifetime, will have installed two presidents who did not win the popular vote nationwide. And so you didn't want them to say, vote for John Kasich in some effort to get anyone but Trump? Absolutely not. No. Um, I'm speaking for myself. I think there was hope on the part of the Hamilton electors that that would happen. That was another organization that was involved in the coalition here today. But myself, I, I think that our electors should vote for the person that the people in Vermont voted for. And we applauded when they did that. Some Bernie people in the crowd too, right? That's right. There was a group of people that were trying to get Bernie elected by the electors as well. I guess there's 50 electors in California who were going to vote for Bernie because they felt he should have won the Democratic nomination and he could have beat Trump. I think that's true myself. I think that the Democratic nomination was stolen from Bernie. I think he won the popular vote in the way that the money in politics essentially worked to buy the superdelegates for Hillary is what has led us to this outcome, which is a disaster for our country. Thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Gwendolyn Hallsmith, I live in Cabot, Vermont, and I'm the state coordinator for Democracy Spring, which is a national organization dedicated to ending voter suppression, ending Citizen United, and guaranteeing one person, one vote for everybody in this country. Were you pleased about what happened in this room today? Oh, absolutely. My goal was to fill room 11, and we had room 11 full and flowing out down the hall. I think we had over 200 people here today. I'll know when I count the people that signed in. But we gave people an opportunity to speak and to talk about what in the Trump presidency was most worrisome for them. And we heard from all walks of life. We heard from people in the LGBTQ community who were worried about their safety and their children's safety under a Trump presidency. We heard from a disabled woman who was really dismayed that Trump mocks disabled people and was still elected president. We heard from people of color. We heard from people in the elder community who are worried about cuts in Social Security. We heard a lot from the environmental community who are really concerned about Trump's appointments of oil executives to the major slots in his cabinet. I personally am particularly concerned about the number of big banks and investment firms that he's been appointing to his cabinet, Goldman Sachs in particular, because of course one of the issues I work on is for a more democratic economy. Here in Vermont we'll be pushing for another public bank this legislative session and we're going to be trying to take away some of the power that the big banks have over our economy. <clears throat> and I, I overheard you saying that you believe there are 50 electors in California who are 
are going to change their vote to, to Bernie. I, I doubt that it's Trump voters in California that are voting for Bernie. It's probably Hillary voters that are voting for Bernie. So there you get into this complicated mess of the Electoral College. If suddenly a bunch of people vote for Bernie instead of Hillary, then she doesn't she loses those votes. So Democracy Spring did not take a stand actually on the Electoral College voting for cases, so voting for Bernie. We are hoping that Trump voters abstain so that he goes in with less than the 270 votes he needs to be president. We would like to stop Trump, but that doesn't mean stopping Trump by using an elitist, racist, and undemocratic institution to put somebody else in power because that also is not very democratic, ultimately. I think ultimately we need to get rid of the Electoral College because the Electoral College was not, in fact, set up to vet presidential candidates, or there would be a process for doing that built into their deliberations. Did you see them vetting the presidential candidates today? No. And when 20 or more electors on the national level asked just for an intelligence briefing on this candidate, they were denied that by our in intelligence community. So arguing at the Electoral College will vet and approve candidates based on their qualifications is a lie. The Electoral College was essentially set up to give the large slave-holding southern states more votes for their slaves. If you look at the mechanisms that are built into the college itself, there's nothing about vetting a presidential candidate, but there is something about counting slaves as three-fifths human. These guys were smart guys. It was all about power of southern states. It really wasn't about the qualifications of the president. That's very interesting. Very few people understand about that. I know, but there is an article in Time magazine and there was an article in Truth Out that goes over this recently, so I encourage you to look that up if you're interested. The other really important point is that, as a realist, I believe Trump will be elected by the Electoral College. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's any difference that this action is actually going to make to that end. And Democracy Spring is dedicated to escalating nonviolent direct action around the country to protect our rights as citizens, to advocate for the environment, and to restore democracy. So if people are interested in doing more and in staying involved, please get in touch with me and Democracy Spring to do that. DemocracySpring.org is the main national website, and we have a Facebook page here in Vermont, Vermont Democracy Spring, that is a closed group, but if people send me a note, I'm happy to put them in touch with that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Renee Carpenter. I live in the town of East Montpelier. What is most significant about the Electoral College is that the primary reason for its establishment was to allow for a situation exactly like this. The founders of the Constitution, maybe it was because they were people of power and they saw how easily they could potentially abuse it if they weren't uh, evolving our democratic form of governance based on spiritual principles. Perhaps because they had that amount of power, they realized how power in the hands of most people, in, in their age they would have said, in the hands of most men, um, is so easily corrupted and how people are so easily corruptible. And so the purpose of the Electoral College is in case we had a demagogue who was unfit to hold the highest office in the land of the United States so that they could be deterred by this uh, constitutional authority of the members of the Electoral College. So while I absolutely support the efforts of Democracy Spring and the concept of one person, one vote, that's not what we have now. What we have now is a very small minority of corporatist individuals, Bernie Sanders says it's 0.01 percent, who control 90 percent of the media that we want to trust, 
and those who echo them because they don't have the skills developed through studying media literacy. And so we want to believe what the New York Times tells us. We want to believe National Public Radio and Vermont Public Radio. But actually, all of these media outlets are um, echoing. They are, um, on a corporate level, they are beholden to their corporate underwriters, and on a practical level of individual journalists, they have been trained in a particular way, and there are certain conventions of journalism and the business of generating news that creates a false narrative that many of us believe. <laughs> The, well, in my research, I came up with the word emoluments, which was in the original Constitution document. That seems to refer exactly to the conflict of interest issue about the Trump election. And it would even seem to refer, now that you've just mentioned uh, the corporate media beholden to certain power elites, that's another extension of emoluments, isn't it? So that, that actually proves the case about the entirely corrupt system that we are now ruled by. That, that is probably a fair analysis. I'm not a constitutional scholar. Lawrence Lessig is a constitutional scholar. I would encourage people to read his material. He had offered to pay the legal fees and offer legal support for any elector who was willing, especially Republican electors, willing to not vote for Trump. Uh, so he would be the person to ask this question to. Uh, one of the things I was doing, one of the reasons why I'm here is because I offered to do media outreach for a group of 55 California electors who uh, in a few hours from now will be voting for Bernie Sanders for President of the United States. And in the last uh, more than a week actually, um, they've been trying to circulate a letter that they wrote on December 8th uh, they sent it to all members, uh, 538 members of the Electoral College, and their intention was to remind us all that the Democratic primary was actually stolen by electoral fraud, that the Democratic National Convention was actually a media entertainment event where 46% of Bernie Sanders' delegates who went to that Democratic National Convention hoping to express their concerns about electoral fraud were disbarred, they weren't given free speech, they had their certification removed, and, uh, and then uh, I saw first-hand uh, source documents of this, they hired actors to fill in the seats of the Democratic National Convention, so it looked like it was a full hall. But by the last day of the Democratic National Convention, 46% of the Democratic uh, delegates for Bernie Sanders, most of them, probably 90 to 95% of them, were not who you saw in the hall on your television when you thought what was happening was real. What I'm saying is that these 55 electors and all of their allies and their entire media outreach team that blanketed national media, newspapers, television, radio, barely broke through the mainstream narrative. Only the Huffington Post picked up the story that there were a large number of people urging electors to vote for Bernie Sanders because in the end he is and was the most popular candidate across all party lines across the entire nation and the only reason why he did not win the Democratic primary which would have put him up against Trump the only reason he didn't win that is a story of ongoing tactics of suppression in Democratic caucuses, first-person accounts 
reported on that. And the fact that our electronic voting machines are owned by GOP corporate operatives and they function with proprietary software. And anyone who knows anything about computer software knows that the software doesn't matter what you put in, the software can determine what comes out. And so if we are not hand counting our paper ballots, we do not know how many people actually did vote for Clinton or Trump or Jill Stein or other candidates for our national election. Because if whoever it was stole the Democratic primary, of course they could steal the national election. And that was the entire purpose behind Jill Stein's efforts to recount the votes in the three swing states where she was able to raise enough money. There are about a dozen swing states where um, statisticians and those who study electoral integrity documented very clearly the likelihood of improprieties. And by the way, it wasn't hacking by the Russians. This is all internal. So what are the false news narratives that are being propagated now? That the Russians hacked our elections? If you remember the mass media march to the war against Iraq, same strategies. And the other false media narrative is fake news. I will tell you, our government and most other powerful governments have been generating what is actual, real, fake news going back forever. And it is how those people in power use the science of human psychology and communication to convince we the people that something is happening that isn't happening and to cover up what's really going on. This is a wake-up call.